Night to Circus Live is actually top three biggest productions on the road. And now we have to get this entire massive production all the way over to the other side of the world, to Africa. South Africa is the first tour since the very start that I haven't been able to go to. Travis isn't there as well, which basically puts Dove in charge. Hey guys, listen up. God help us. We're here in South Africa for the next month. And while we're here, we're gonna be running into 20-foot man-eating crocodiles. Today we have our friend Donald Schultz, who's gonna show us how to handle some smaller crocodiles so we know what to do when we're out there in the wild and running the real thing. My name is Donald Schultz. I was born and raised in South Africa and I've dedicated my life to working with wild animals. Donald Schultz is gnarly. He base jumps, he skydives, he's an animal expert. I think he's definitely gonna have his hands full with dealing with the Nitro Circus. My goal on this is to keep all the crew at Nitro Circus safe, not only from wild animals, but from themselves. Crocs we're going to see are 20 footers, man eaters, one of the few animals that habitually eat people. My goal was to impress on the Nitro crew exactly where they stand on the food chain. Crocodiles rule the roost in Africa and about 10,000 people get eaten every year by crocodiles. We're learning all kinds of things in South Africa like Donald Schultz is not afraid of crocodiles. These crocs are little babies, basically the equivalent of a poodle. Dude, look how sharp their teeth are. What, what are we doing in here? If you get hit by a croc in the water, you're losing your arm. Crocodiles 101 is going OK. We're getting the basics down, but these are small crocs. These are three to four footers, and we're going to be dealing with 20-foot monsters. You make sure that you get in their blind spot. So if you look at his head from here, he's looking out at the sides. Right. Oftentimes, you'll have people coming from the front. Oh my god. Come on, stop that. Oh my god. <laughs> and then you let him gas out. Pretty much the only way to catch a crocodile is to get into its blind spot. And I showed the guys, and I think they get the theory pretty well. Hey, let me help you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> nice work. That's a wild animal, rubs. The reason we practice on small crocodiles is you can learn from your mistakes. The first rule was don't touch the tail, and Rona jumped on the tail and got smacked. Thankfully, it was a small croc, so the lesson isn't that painful. But if you do that on a big croc, it's going to break a leg. That very violent, very explosive. Oh, Dude. One of us is going to lose an arm. Oh, okay. That's a death roll. So what happens is when they get into a situation they want to get out of, they'll roll. And if they're hanging onto you and you have a bit like your arm in their mouth, they'll roll your Snap arm off. right off. Yeah. Basically, what we learned here today is none of us should go anywhere near a crocodile. We're going to leave that up to you, Donald. I'm really not a reptile person. Hey, what's that in your hand right there? Um, you know, when you work with crocs, sometimes you get hurt. So it looks like he might have given me his tooth. That's his tooth? That's a baby. When we get to 20 footers, that's the size of its tail. Now that we've learned a few of the do's and don'ts with the smaller crocodiles, we're going to go over and help some of the guys move a big crocodile. Let's get out of here. Watch for the crocodiles. <laughs> Currently, the Nitro Circus Tour is in South Africa, but it is missing its prodigal son, Travis. And that's because he broke his leg doing something a little too aggressively. Wide open! Since Travis is bored, he asked me to bring together the management team for him to come in and pitch a project that he's really eager to do. I'm very curious to see what it is. All right, guys. Got y'all out here. We're making a movie. Had a little bit of downtime with this injury to kind of think about things, and there hasn't been an old school, action-packed video. Like, everything now is documentaries. Really, we need something that people can watch, that people can go and turn on and get inspired to go out there. And we have the best in the world from all these different forms of action sports. The whole concept behind action figures was to get back to the roots of the lifestyle and culture of action sports. I feel like it had such a boom back in the early 90s because we had so many videos. And it wasn't just an internet piece of, wow, that jump was really cool. It was a lifestyle. It was a, a movie depicting this no holds bar, freedom, do what you want to do, live life to the fullest kind of atmosphere. Action figures is my idea 
to get back to the roots, get back to the core. And with this, hopefully instill in the next generation that this lifestyle is not dead, this culture is still alive and that we're still having a doggone good time riding dirt bikes without rules. I've never been in full control of making a film. How much control do you want over this thing? Full control, creative control. 100% control. I, 99.5? <laughs> I mean, 100%. <laughs> the idea of complete control that Travis is requesting is fine. He'll do great things. So long as he assumes the responsibility. With power comes responsibility, said Confucius. Or maybe that was Spider-Man. For the past 12 years making films with you, you probably haven't noticed this, but there are a bunch of people behind the scenes making all of this stuff happen. And the hardest part about filmmaking is not the stunts. It's actually- I beg to differ. It's- <laughs> <laughs> I will make you an amazing product with next level stuff that pushes the envelope and, and hopefully inspires. I can do that. But you guys, you know, distribute it. Yeah. With Nitro, we've got every platform we yeah. need to really do yeah. this completely yeah. in house. Yeah. Uh, absolutely no, no problem at all. All right. So, all right, we're good? Done. Yeah. Adjourned. Hey, hey, really, really yeah, appreciate very it. Very right. uh, don't worry, I'm in no injuries in this film. <laughs> Action figures, today's the day you're taking off. We had the morning off before our biggest show ever. I got a bunch of BMXs together to go check out Soweto. It's a huge honor for me to show the Nitro Circus crew South Africa, but more specifically Soweto, a place off the beaten path that's a huge part of South African history. Soweto is an iconic area of South Africa and very important in the freedom struggle. Nelson Mandela, Desmond Tutu all came from Soweto and visiting there is a huge honor. Soweto has probably got like 63 townships within it. So Soweto is like the main city and it's got other small towns within it. This is such an incredible opportunity to get to go check out an entire part of a country that we normally wouldn't get to. Hopefully we get to go ride for the kids a little bit. We found this skate park next to a school. This is like the only skate park in Soweto. This was like created like three years ago. Gonna go do some backflips for the kids. All the kids in the neighborhood started running out to come watch us do tricks. It was awesome. Some of these kids have never had a bicycle in their life and they're seeing people pull off tricks on bicycles they didn't even know was possible and it's opening up all new worlds of possibility for them. Just amazing to be here and show the locals what we can do on bikes and have a little mini demo for them. The kids were so rad. They didn't want to just watch, they wanted to jump on our bikes. So we taught them a couple tricks. This is absolutely incredible, being here in Soweto and getting to ride for the locals, especially the kids, it's just absolutely amazing. Now that he's gone, <laughs> let's talk about this for real. I think we all probably feel the same about it. I'm a bit terrified. Same time, I'm incredibly excited. I think this thing can be just absolutely huge. The first movie ever fully created, directed, and produced by Travis Pastrana, I think it's just gonna go crazy out there. People are sure. But the problem is that that stuff like permits and waivers and insurance and, and occupational health and yeah. safety and all that stuff is not even gonna be considered here at all. Unless you, Jeremy, as head of media, um, can think you can sort of clean this up. And remember, you can't do it from in front. You're gonna be cleaning up from behind. Right. Giving Travis complete creative control of this project is such a scary proposition, to be honest. I've been working with him for 12 years and there's been a lot of cleanup um, all along the way. Um, I do think that he's a little bit naive. Once again, he's overly optimistic and isn't thinking about all the details. We're gonna to have to walk behind him with a broom and sweep this up into a dustpan because there's gonna be carnage and all sorts of crap that goes along the way. 
There might be a little bit of grumbling on my part about how much of a mess and chaos that Travis is gonna create. But in truth, he's a magician when it comes to creating stunts and content that people wanna see. I kinda have to buck up and make sure that the stuff happens behind the scenes that you know needs to be squared away. If we let him do what he does, it makes magic. Yeah. We can pick up the pieces. Okay. Well, I think it's gonna be incredible. But good luck. <laughs> <sighs> I need a drink. Now that our training with the Smart Crocs is done, we're here with Donald to help him deal with his problem croc. This is a big 12, 14 foot croc that needs to be moved. Figure you guys can help out. With crocodile conservation, you often have big breeding pools. And with this crocodile, he had outgrown his pool, so we needed to move him to another area before he did some damage to his females. This is pretty much where the tourists go when they come visit Zululand. You guys are coming through the fence to help out. Cool. Let's do it. Yeah. What we're gonna do is, because the pond is quite deep, Fortune over here has been feeding the crocs for a long time. They recognize him, feed them a little bit of chicken just to get them out the ponds. And then it's gonna be yourself and Donald, you're gonna be standing next to Fortune. While that big guy comes out the water, try and get Donald to get either a rope around the head or sort of first prize will be on the top jaw. And then once we've secured him, we're gonna to have to chase the other females back in, try and put a second top jaw rope on him, and then uh, jump him. Any questions? Pretty straightforward. Easy job. Right? That's what we think. Catching crocodiles 101 in three easy steps. Step one, get a jaw rope on. Step two, pull crocodile out the water. Step three, jump on crocodile. It's actually pretty easy. Easy as that. <laughs> in true Nitro Circus fashion, when you're comfortable with something like little crocs, what are we gonna do next? Of course, we're gonna jump on giant crocs. <laughs> Step number one, coaxing the crocs out the water. And all crocodiles love chicken. Get your chicken in. Chicken in, fresh chicken. Tommy, the big guy's coming out, out of the water. Look at that sucker. That's the one. That's what we need. Look at that mess. <laughs> so he's about twice the size of the others. Tommy messed his pants when he saw the size of that croc. Good Tommy, one. that guy's bigger than you. Big dominant male crocodiles are huge, and they looked really small in the water. So I knew once we pulled that croc out and the boys saw how big this is, they're gonna realize the gravity of the situation. Yeah. Oh, Donald. All right. Uh, oh. no, 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 no. This croc does not want to be moved from his room at the Ritz-Carlton. He's getting three squares of raw chicken a day and has living girlfriends. I don't blame him. The age-old rope and stick method has always worked with crocodiles, but this is an old male that's obviously figured us out and is actually outsmarting us at the moment. That's a badass, strong, clever crocodile, and I'm still gonna make him my bitch. Visiting Soweto has been a great experience. We're just here to spread some positivity to some local kids who otherwise wouldn't be able to make the big show. The community here is awesome. So I need the five craziest boys. Right, who's ready? Who's ready okay. to get jumped? Stay down. And you have to keep your eyes open. Woo! Oh, Jed's oh, going in. Over. Oh, no. Can I bump jump you? Can I bump jump you? <laughs> when I got the chance, I jumped up and got out of there before something bad happened. Before we left the skate park, we had some gifts for the kids, and they were super stoked. All right, we got some more wheels. Here we go. Got it. Have fun. To be able to ride at the local skate park here in Soweto is just, it's unreal. Just a special day in, in Nitro Circus history for sure.
Travis called in to give me a little report on how things are going out with production, and he said, everything's great, people are safe, he's got things covered, he just needs a little bit more time. And as a producer, time actually means money. So each day you're in production, it means thousands and thousands of dollars. Jeremy! Hey, TP. Yo, what? So how's the ramp building going? Yeah, well, <laughs> funny you should ask. I was just calling to say the ramps are finally working. OK, that's a total lie. No, we're pretty much starting at square one. But we've now, like Edison, found more ways that the light bulb is, is not working. So we started out metal ramp, jacked up metal ramp, metal ramp on jacked up metal ramp, new ramp. New ramp didn't work. New ramp, took out the bottom, put wood on metal, then metal on metal, then metal on wood on extension, and now we're going dirt to metal to extension. Attempt number eight, we got this. No, like literally 100 feet in the air, um, Sheenies rotating triples, uh, patch A720s. Um, I'm working on some, some double corks and stuff, but not, it's not a lost cause, I'm telling you. Josh Sheehan has a triple flip. The stuff that they're doing on the bicycles, it's unbelievable. It's not a lost cause, but look, I mean, I'm sorry, I know we're behind schedule. I know we're way over budget. I know we need more budget, we need more time. Um, and I, I appreciate everything that you guys have done, but we can't quit at halftime. We are fully committed to Travis on this Action Figures project, and that's great. But we have a budget in place, and we have to keep to it. If we go over the budget, then we lose money, and we're not around any longer. So, Travis, if you go over the budget, that means that I'm the one that goes over the budget, because I have to talk to the management. I was hoping it'd go a little bit better, it'd cost a little less, and that we wouldn't have had so many injuries along the way, but I think we're making some good progress. But we're gonna do it, man. You guys with me? We're with you, buddy. It's approved. Love you, Jeremy. Thanks for the support, man. It's gonna be worth it. I promise you. I promise you. We're in. We're fully committed. <laughs> don't worry about the lawyers. I got this. Just don't screw it up. Donald's got us out here at this croc farm to relocate a really angry, gigantic crocodile. Why is it that whenever I get the phone call to do something first, it's always to be stunt meat? In this case, I'm a paperweight for a crocodile. Here, boy. Come here. All big crocs are smart crocs. That's how they get big. There he is. We've got something. Oh, it's gone. Fish on! Dude, everyone over here, quick! Yep, bring that, bring the rope. Yep. You got him on the tail. Pull, right. well, everyone. Usually when catching crocodiles, you get a jaw rope on, pull them out the water, jump on them. This wasn't that situation. We got a tail rope on first and pulled the crocodile out the water. Not an ideal situation with a big male croc. This is going to be a lot harder than I thought. Wait, everyone wait, back. Wait, 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 wait. Let him gas. This is so <gasps> intense just right now. just got him. They've, let, they've got him by the tail. The goal was to get him by the head. He's pissed. What we do next is get what's called a neck rope on, and the idea is to triangulate the croc or keep him in one spot. Hey, hey, wake up, bro. Oh, nice. Neck rope yeah. is on. And then we need a jaw rope. OK, ready okay. go. One, one two, yeah, two Tommy. three. <laughs> oh, jeez. OK. All right. Right. Okay. We pull away from the water a bit more. No, that's here. good. That's fine. Crocodiles have incredible closing force, but opening they don't have much strength. So the idea is to get a jaw rope on to shut their jaws to make it more safe. Nice work. Clear. There we go. All right. So the only thing we have to worry about is his tail and his mouth. So once we start moving him forward, hopefully he'll death roll away from this over there. He'll wrap himself up, and then we can jump on him. Hey, mate. Am I in trouble? How are you, Jed? I always hate coming into your office. You don't call me into your office. Much. What am I, the principal? Yeah, I feel like it. <laughs> no, no, I just want to talk to you about uh, action figures. Uh, I just saw my first bit of footage of, uh, of, of action figures, and I saw Trevor Jacob uh, maybe 100 feet in the air uh, and bouncing off a tree. Um, and if he hadn't bounced off the tree, he wouldn't have hit the airbag. So. Um, 
be honest with you, it's like, it, 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 it terrified me. When Michael asked me into his office, I knew exactly what I was going into. I had seen the same footage, and frankly, it made me poop my pants. I think that this project may be going off the rails, and Michael knows it, and I basically had to lie through my teeth and say that I have everything under control, which I do not. I'm on it, the team's on it. Uh, we're doing everything we can, so okay. rest assured, it's being taken care of. Good luck. <laughs> I need it, man. You put me in charge of Travis, that's the worst job in the world. All right. All right, see ya. Today is the moment that I feared would actually come. My sources tell me out in the field that some of the guys are starting to get hurt and broken off while filming action figures. So I have to pick up the phone and check with the source and see what Travis says. Tyler? No, no, Tyler's fine, man. He, uh, I mean, he got hurt a little bit uh, trying that, that triple flip. Um, he just, he bailed out a little bit. not real. Dude, right now, Schmitty, he's filming uh, Woodward. We got um, Trevor Jacob. He's with Marty um, and Dusty. Those guys are just rushing out there. I mean, the base jump footage was, was, it was epic. I mean, really, really crazy, crazy stuff. But no, no, don't worry. No, everyone's being safe, man. I finally got Travis on the phone, and in the conversation, he basically just kind of went round and round and round, and in the end, somehow I didn't talk a whole lot, and he hung up saying everything's great. Uh, Jer, Jer, seriously, nothing to be worried about, man. Uh, we got four film crews in four different locations. Everyone is crushing it. The ramps here, we're making awesome progress. No, tell the lawyers, everybody's gonna be safe. Dude, we're good. No, action figure is gonna be the best ever. Away from the water, because there's two other crocs in there. Okay, they have the ropes on, now they have to jump on his back. All right. That's Tommy's job, right? Hold him like this, so that he doesn't hit. Watch here. See? Side to side, it would have broken your leg. Like, that would have shattered your leg totally right where you're standing. Not keen on the blindfold. I definitely am not jumping on that crocodile's head. Tommy, that's all you, buddy. When I came over to South Africa, jumping on the back of a giant crocodile is not what I thought was going to be on my itinerary. Three, two, one, go. Go! Get yeah, Tommy! Get yeah, Tommy! Tommy! Don't lose focus, because he's just going to wait for an opportunity to explode. Once that croc was pinned, Tommy and Jed sprung into action, and now Jed's dry humping it. Yeah, just remember, hold his legs up, hold his head up, hold his tail up. He has no rotational force. Perfect, perfect design. It hasn't changed in 150 million years. Safety first, but I wouldn't have volunteered to be the first person jumping on that massive croc. Hey, okay, mate. Well, so what do we do now? Jed. Now we move him. So the next step is we're going to load him into the stretcher and then use the stretcher to carry him out. In true Nitro fashion, we did the whole crop capture backwards, but it seemed to work and everyone was safe, and now our only goal is to get this big guy loaded up and moved out. One, two, three, go. Uh, yeah, it's definitely not 1,500 kilos. I got a lot of weight for you some did, reason. Okay. Everything I've ever seen on TV going on safari means you're sitting in a 4x4 four four with some dude driving along and you get to like throw peanuts at lions or whatever. You got me out here on the ground, this is crazy. If you guys need a break, just say so. We took down the fence of you. You're going to get the head on at the front, and then just slide him on with the, with the whole harness. Okay, Thanks, Tommy. This? That's a big son bitch. New pickup line at the bar. These hands have wrestled a crocodile. <laughs> it's all about conservation. Sometimes you got to put yourself at risk for the better good. Guys, well, thank you very much for, for your help today. Uh, you guys felt the weight of this animal. You felt the strength of it as well. There's no way we would have been able to move it without your help. Thank you very much. Really appreciate yeah. it. Thank you very much, because this was a great, great honor. Crazy working with dinosaurs, and this is the front line of conservation. This is what it feels like. Let's get going. Right, let's go. Things bigger than the truck. 
So good thing we've captured it, we tied it up, and now we're going to release it. You're going back, Bob, going with you. Nitro Geographic. I know conservation is a serious topic here in South Africa, and thanks to Donald Schultz, Nitro Circus had a hand in it. Catching a crocodile is a unique experience, and it was really special to share it with the Nitro crew, and the locals were really thankful that we had such big burly men to move this massive crocodile. You guys did it! Yeah! We saved him! Nice job. Hello. No one died. <laughs> Nitro Circus Live is coming to Durban, South Africa. And something I jumped illegally as a base jumper a couple years ago is where the show's being held. We're here at Moses Mabita Stadium in Durban. Right now, we're going to take this sky car to the top of this huge arch they have built over the stadium that I might get to base jump into the show tomorrow night. The plan Rona and I have is to go speak to the authorities to get permission for him to base jump into the show to start off the whole event. Anytime you try to get a base jump legal, especially a demonstration one in front of thousands of people, you have to jump through a lot of hoops. We made a call to the local authorities to see if Rona could base jump, and the immediate response was no, but come speak to us anyway. The fact that Donald was able to hook up with the venue and, and allow us to even look at the possibility of Rona jumping from the arch is amazing for us, because we've never been allowed to. Donald and I flew out of Cape Town early, 4.30 in the morning, to meet with 25, 30 suits here at the stadium. They wanted me to go up top and point out where I'm jumping and how is this gonna work. They want all the details. It could be really awesome for Durban, it could be awesome for me and all the people here at the show. So come on, let me do it. Since before we even started Nitro Live, that was kind of his idea. I wanna jump into a show, I wanna jump into a show. And now Dee might actually get to do it. I'm getting 112 yards, so. In the U.S. sense, you basically times that by three. That's why I said I could come in the morning and do a jump for them when no one's down there, and they could look up, you know, from the seats and be like, oh, yeah. And so there's no, you. So all of that is no concern that you throw your shoots and it no. touches this thing. No. I'll be past that. It was a pleasure to sit back and watch him negotiate and deal with, with not only the, the police, but also the, the venue. I've never really seen anyone talk and schmooze and, and deal with him like that. Like, he was wheeling and dealing the whole time, and hanging off, taking photos, and explaining flight paths and airtime. And it was a real treat to watch him put so much passion and make this dream of his come to fruition. I'm just trying to persuade as much as I possibly can. <laughs> That's my job right now, right? Little by little, you could see them coming over to his side, partly because he's so professional, so well put together, and the fact that he's so safety conscious. Now we're at the point where Eric has to do a trial jump for the local police and fire department to show them that this is safe enough that he's not gonna land in the crowd and, and hurt a spectator. Thanks again, nice. though. I really appreciate it. Though. This stunt could be the best entrance in Nitro Circus Live history. We just got word there's some ramps set up in the middle of Soweto. Awesome. But we're going to have to ride through the streets to get there. This is going to be an adventure. All right. Oh, I got a new recruit for tour. Yeah. 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 got his reference right there. Yeah. As we're getting closer to the big demo, there's just kids everywhere. They're pouring into the streets and running to get to the Orlando Towers. It's probably the most surreal moment we've ever experienced on tour.
This is amazing, man. Being able to come here in Soweto and perform for all the local kids is just, it's incredible. It's such a treat. This makes me appreciate what we do so much more. We've got some merchandise and we're going to give it away to these kids. Soweto. Why can't we have a thousand more shirts? I just saw one of the bigger kids just gave his shirt to one of the littler guys, so. Really? That's awesome. I feel like we've gained so much out of this experience and appreciation for what's going on here in Soweto. All the kids chase us down from the swimming pool. They're, they're not wearing anything but swimming trunks. They're giving more to us than we could ever give to them. Thank you for having us. Definitely. Thank um, you for you guys coming through, man. You've changed the community as well, man. Now that we've got the scouts out of the way, the next thing we have to do is show the local police, security, and stadium officials that this stunt is safe. I really appreciate you letting us try this, and you guys can kind of see how it all goes and make your decision. And uh, yeah, it's good. It's gonna be fun. Yeah. One of the things about base jumping is most of the time it's illegal, so most of the time you spend running away from the police. Being in a situation where you're speaking to a cop about base jumping and then having them watch the whole thing go down is just very, very atypical. Going up, headed up 330 feet over the stadium to make the first legal base jump ever. Holy cow, this just got real. I'm here with the local authorities that are in charge of the area. We've got the police department, the fire department, and they're obviously all a little skeptical because this is normally something that's illegal. They were more curious than you know, wanting to make this happen. I think they just wanted to see the spectacle of a guy jumping out of a roof. So this is the final hoop I have to jump through in order to base jump into a live show tonight in front of everyone. All the bosses down there want to see that I can do it safely with an empty stadium right now. So when the place is packed, they have pure confidence that I can pull this off safely. The runner said, here's a mat that's four feet by two feet. I'm going to land on this. I'm going to fly this way and land on this. And you could just see in their face that they didn't really believe that that's possible. This isn't going to be easy. So this is the final step for me to get approval to base jump into the live show tonight. Right now, base jumping is extremely scary to everybody down there. They haven't been a part of it. They haven't seen much of it. So my goal right now is to prove to them that this is going to go well and that I can do it tonight in front of 20,000 people. Let's do this. And just like that, Roner hits the mark just like he said he would. The officials went from being skeptical to now being impressed and taking photos with Roner. They want to see it again. <laughs> and now it looks like he's going to get to do the jump. Another approval. We've been talking about it. I've been begging you for four years to skydive or base jump into the stadium. And finally, Tonight, I get to make the proper entrance I've wanted since we started this night to a circus live tour. So pumped for Eric Rohner. He finally got his wish. He's always wanted to base jump into the opening ceremonies of a Nitro Circus Live. Hello, Durbin. All right, well, that did not suck. Great demo jump. Let's do that thing for the live show. They make me jump a junky old couch off a ramp.
Runner gets to base jump into a World Cup soccer stadium. I think I need a new agent. Hey guys, what's going on? Well, we finally got some good news for y'all. We are done filming. Completely 100% done. No way. In the can, dude. That's amazing. We got uh, just a little bit wrapping up. Uh, Schmidt's finally, he's finalizing his section. They just actually uh, were filming yesterday. These guys, uh, they, they want the best. Everybody's been, been putting the hours, man. And this is, uh, I think you guys are gonna be really stoked. Finally done filming. Not only did we accomplish everything we wanted to, but tenfold more with safety, with height, with uh, quad backflip on bicycles, triple backflip on, on motorcycles. I mean, so far, just exceeded all of my expectations. OK, so what's next, man? The biggest thing that I'm going to ask is that we have a premiere not in LA, not in a typical spot. It's going to be in my hometown. Uh, we had so many guys, local guys, come out and help. Uh, building ramps, everyone welding their own stuff. And since it's the start of tour, uh, we'll have everybody uh, in the DC area. So if uh, possible, really like to put a red carpet together for these guys. Who would have thought Travis and all his crazy mates pulling this thing off and actually doing an absolutely amazing job on, on, on action figures. So uh, what better way to celebrate than have a premiere in his hometown and a gigantic after party? Let's do it, it's gonna be fun. Runner's base jumping out of the roof tonight. Some uh, we've all been working on for quite some time, so we're all pumped on it. We did a demo jump today that went great, but the winds have changed to the complete opposite direction right now, which means I need a whole new flight plan 10 minutes before the show. The plan has just totally changed. The wind kicked up in a different direction, so now Runner's looking at a different flight path to, to land in a totally different area than where we rehearsed. With something like this, safety is 100% the name of the game, but I don't think there's any way that he's not going to do it. Got to make some serious decisions here in a few minutes, so it just makes it that much more exciting. We got it, though. Everyone have a great show. Good luck. And uh, let's bring in Roner on three. Yeah. 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 Yeah, reps. One, two, three. Roner! All right, we're going up for showtime. Fans are packing in the stadium. There's supposed to be 23,000 people. We're headed to the top of the arch and jump in, light the bomb, and get the show started. I think I gotta change the plan here with these winds blowing straight that way, and I think I'm gonna need to land in the FMX in run. Go time, 23,000 people, show starring. Let's give them a real show. Brown is about to jump out the roof, and it's gonna be the gnarliest introduction the show has ever seen. From Lake Tahoe in the USA, an extreme skier who is about to base jump into Moses Mabita Stadium, Eric Rohner. No one in the stadium knew that Rohner was going to jump until it was announced. Then they all looked up in the sky and they couldn't believe what was happening. I'd have to say, hands down, that is the best entrance to any Night Circus show ever. That was probably one of the most sickest stops I've ever seen to a show. Blackfoot based jump out of the room, Eric Ronart, you're a mad dog. The show in Durban was awesome. But this was our first venue where Rubs could actually jump in, and what a treat that was. The NBC for tonight goes to uh, one of our favorites, the great Eric Rona for his epic face jump. Yeah. 
to finally get to see Roner do a base jump in a show is one of the best moments we've ever had in Nitro Live. He's come up to me in almost every single venue we've ever done a show and said, I could jump from that ceiling. For it to finally happen, to see how stoked he was and to see how pumped the cast was and the fans, to me, this was the best show we've ever done. Stoked, this is uh, my first Nitro Award ever. <laughs> and I'm so honored to have this. I'm so honored to be a part of this family. You guys are a bunch of talented freaks. This is so much fun. As old as I am, I do not want to give it up because this is a time of my life. I love you all. I always feel like the Nitro crew does things a little bit differently than, than the rest of the world. I mean, most people have a premiere to show the world what they've done. It was just simply internal. Anyone that had a hand in this film was there, and Tommy got dressed up, led the charge. In the end, Travis, James, and the rest of the guys that worked on action figures did an amazing job. They had to learn a lot, and they had to overcome a whole bunch of stuff that they didn't expect. I knew, and I was confident that that's what we'd get. So hats off to those guys, and I'm excited to watch this thing. Yeah, there you go. We just got together at a local theater by Travis' house, dressed up in dumb costumes and goofed off and threw popcorn around and hoot and hollered for each other and had fun and laughed and made fun of each other. And it was like, that was the best way we could have ever celebrated the finish of it. All of you guys out there should really go get yourself a copy of Action Figures. It's the number one selling film for iTunes in Estonia. The record speaks for itself. Yeah, I did it! The screening turned out so cool because it was one of those rare moments where you have so many people that work so hard on a film that you pretty much filled up a, an entire theater. It was kind of a wild experience all around and to have everybody there and for the first time that everyone was getting to see the whole movie as a, as a single project was, was really cool. It was a pretty awesome feeling. All right, everyone, three.